You're also going to have to be able to interpret acceleration time graphs. Now you already know that we can we can step backwards here. Displacement time graph, velocity time graph, acceleration time graph. So you should be able to move from here to here. I'm, I'm moving away from something at a constant velocity. Here's my constant velocity. Now if my constant, if I have a constant velocity, I'm not accelerating and I'm not decelerating. So my acceleration over time is zero. I'm accelerating at zero meters per second per second. All right, let's take a look at what else we've got here. If we compare it to this graph here, um, now my displacement, we've talked about this in a previous one, but my displacement, start, I'm a little bit above the origin. Um, I start off by moving quite slowly, then I get faster and faster and faster and faster. So this is a quadratic function. Now, what that looks like is my velocity increasing. So I start at zero meters per second per second, then I one me sorry, zero meters per second, then one meter per second, then two meters per second, then three meters per second, then four meters per second. Now, you can see the gradient of my velocity uh, curve is constant. It, it's a constant gradient. That translates into my acceleration graph. So if the gradient of that is, say, uh, 4, 4, then that means the acceleration is 4, 4 metres per second per second, or kilometres per hour per hour, or centimetres per minute per minute, whatever it might be. Or another way to write that is 4 metres per second squared. Okay. Uh, you have access to these, so you can take a look at them, but... There's some acceleration time graphs and how to interpret them. You really need to get down into this stuff and actually try to put into words what you're seeing when you interpret this graph and this graph and this graph.